Yeah, I'm right here. Ready to go? No. Oh, this is bugging me. What should I do? Should I just cut my hands off? No, you're fine. If you don't mean to do it, it's fine. Every time I do, I do a slide muscle right in my head. No, it's fine. It's not, mm -hmm. it's not caused by you. But if you just do normal massage, it shouldn't be an issue. Yeah. Just a lot. If it's causing you, yeah. get rid of it. I just remember you're online. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, whatever conversation. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Brilliant. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barakatuhu Allah sayyidi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'i wa ba'd Someone raised a question and I've got doubt in my head so I'm not really sure about when you asked me the question about combing somebody asked me about combing can you comb your hair um, while showing the haram I, I think I said yes as long as hair doesn't drop I take that back because I'm I, something's Somebody pointed out, Khalid by pointed out, maybe you're not allowed to. So I don't know. Okay, but for sure, uh, we, we can we'll clarify it at some point. I'll probably send it to you as an answer. But, um, you know, if it's not you causing hair to come out, like when you're making normal wool and hair just ends up on your hand, that's overlooked. But whenever you're making it because you're scratching or you're, you know, you're rubbing your hair, then, then it becomes an issue. Okay, then that's where sadaqah will be due. Now we're going to look at the days of Hajj. I want to um, summarize what I said. In the first session, we looked at Umrah. 
um, we said, look, you're going to leave for Hajj on whatever day. We're leaving the fourth in the evening, inshallah, on that fourth day. It's a Sunday, it is. But um, hopefully, you know, that, that at some point, you know, before that week, maybe you visited family and friends. You know, you've um, given, bid them farewell. You sought, for, you know, permission from your elders. Um, but not that you need to, but and then you seek forgiveness and make up with people that you may have fallen out with. Um, you make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you give some sadaqah, okay? Um, until then, even before that, you now start to make sure your namaz is fit, is good. You've checked your namaz, you're getting into the habit of praying namaz, getting into the habit of praying jamaat in the house, those who pray in the masjid, get pray in the masjid, pray your harams out. Get new footwear, get used to the brothers said, you know, you start wearing new slippers so you know it becomes yeah. um, all these things are really, really important. Fitness important. Um, you know Bismillah. Preparation, you know, mental, physical, spiritual, okay, spiritual, lots of dhikr. You gotta get into dhikr, reading Quran. So your stamina for dhikr grows. Some are not used to doing dhikr, so here, um, start doing lots of dhikr, you know, every day some tasbih and so forth, get used to reading some seerah, read lots of seerah, good for you, seerah's explanation of the Qur'an, explanation of the life of the Prophet, all of that is good preparation, yeah, you can watch these things, alhamdulillah, so many good things, good programs out there to watch, um, that's good. When it comes to the actual day, you take a shower, you take a bath, you trim your nails, you remove hair from your body, you prepare yourself, make sure everything. It's good to pack beforehand. Last thing you need is on that day, you're anxious, I oh, yeah, this, this, this. Pack before, a week before. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm ready to go to the house of Allah, ready, early. That's good. Okay, physically good, outwardly looks beautiful. Spiritually, you relax. If there's anything you miss, you just add it rather than packing the night before. Because most of you can't pack the night before. You're gonna have so much family. Some people, there's not a chance. So get it, get in early. The type of things you need: speak to friends and family. What, what did you take with your hajj? Or you know what? For example, somebody might say there's oral rehydration salts, bro. They're lifesavers, mate. I'm called ORSs. Yeah, they're brilliant. I found them amazing because you lose, you sweat so much. Drink it, you know, put one or two tablets in and khalas. I found them brilliant. Khalid by agrees. They're really good, mashallah. So there's some medication. Yeah, they're called ORSs, OR, oral rehydration salts. Very, very good. Um, but here, you, you might need a water bottle, you know, an a, a, a environmental friendly water bottle, you know, something that you you can carry with you, keep topping up, and you know your needs better than me. Ladies might want to look at they've got during those days maybe they can see their menstrual cycle falling on those days they might want to consult a doctor you know go and speak to a doctor and ask them about what you're planning to do so you need time to get your medication in and get you know try it out and see what happens and so forth you know so there's lots of things to think about and talk about and and prepare yourself for again your debts and anybody who owes money to other people make sure every document clean clear written you know, legally done, somebody knows about it, you know, people know about your affairs and so forth, where your money is, it's all clear, because, hello, you might never come back, alhamdulillah, not an issue, we have a brother, Kamran, rahimullah, they went there, they had an incredible storm there, the the crane fell on him, he died a shaheed, pushing his mother in tawaf, when you have to go, you have no choice about that. It, it can happen, and I should take all the means necessary. Yes, no, we know this, right, from the way life is and so forth. So th- these are the things that need to be done. So when you leave on that Sunday, you go to the airport. Alhamdulillah, you're a traveler. When you leave your house, you're a traveler now. It's a good question from Sister Shakuda. You're a musafir now, so I need to know, why do musafir play travel and pray namaz? They do pray namaz. When you're musafir, you don't. There's no such thing as you don't pray namaz now, you musafir. No, you still have to pray namaz. But how? What is musafir namaz? There's some namazes that you need to learn about because you're going to do so many of them, like janaza prayer. How do I pray janaza prayer? Even the women, know, how do you pray janaza prayer? Because you will be praying janaza prayer with every namaz in the haram. Literally, every single namaz they're going to be doing namaz. You're not going to say, "Oh, I've been namaz, pray No. That's janazah namaz. You're being silly here. 
They pray this fard salah, they're doing Allah, they're doing janaza. How do I pray janaza? I don't know. You're missing out immense reward. So go, go and check out how do you pray janaza. Very easy to pray and to learn. So so on that Sunday, inshallah, you wear your clothes and you've got your um, hand luggage for your ihram. Okay, you have to make sure your ihram's in your hand luggage, not in your main luggage. Okay, and then you go, inshallah ta'ala. And then when you get to Abu Dhabi, we get changed, okay, like we said, and then we we can make two rak'ah, okay, to greet our ihram. We sit down, take a moment, inshallah ta'ala, okay, and then we make we make niyat, ya eh, make that niyat for umrah, and then I read the talbiyah, labbaik, Allahumma labbaik, eh? what an honor, labbaik, la sharika, la labbaik, but I know what it means, eh. I'm interacting with it because I've already trained myself. I've memorized. I've memorized the English. I've memorized the Urdu. I know it. Get it ready for it. And then you get into your talbiyah. Now you know in ihram. And then, inshallah ta'ala, until we get to Mecca. And that moment when we enter Mecca al Mukarramah and we see the Kaaba, we make the dua. We go in to make the tawaf for the Umrah because Umrah is made up of wearing ihram, making tawaf, making Safa Marwa Sa'i. Okay, and shaving my head or cutting my head, four parts. I do that tawaf seven times on the Kaaba. If namaz time comes in, I go pray namaz and carry on from top. Okay, because that sometimes happens. So timing is, is going to be key. Okay, I have to have wudu. If my wudu breaks, what do I do? I turn to my neighbor, you're not borrowing your wudu. It's not a battery charger. You have to make fresh wudu. So this is why. Why are you eating gobi when it doesn't help you? Yeah, why are you eating pizza, gas, or jana? Why are you eating? You should know your body. You should know I need to keep wudu. And some people, which are, they can't keep wudu. So they have to have a backup. If my wudu goes, I need to make wudu. Where do I make wudu? Zam zam water. You know, there you have to use it because there's no other alternative, right? Unless you have a bottle of water with you that you can use. And you can make wudu in their facilities now, alhamdulillah, just near. Um, the, you know where Maqam Ibrahim is behind that? They have wudu areas, not toilets, just wudu areas. So if I'm, so all of these things are important because I need to stay in wudu for a few hours. I've got my mom with me. They can't keep wudu for long. I want, what's the backup? You know, what do I do? They might need to go toilet. So I have that ready. I know where the nearest toilet is. I know I won't be able to move with the group. I have to be independent enough to be able to do that, right? And know that that's the way it's going to work. So this is some of the planning that people need to do, make beforehand, inshallah ta'ala. And so, we made the, the tawaf, okay, read, pray, pray to uh, Raqqa behind Maqam Ibrahim, or somewhere at the back, wherever I find space, drank lots of zamzam, inshallah, okay, then Safa Marwa, got to the end, cut my hair, or shaved my hair, with the ladies, they can, they help each other. I generally, you get a woman who's already cut her hair. They might cut their own because in the other madhaib they're allowed to. And so here you get them to, you know, cut or you cut it in the hotel, okay? And the men go to the barbers and, and get that done. So that's your umrah done. Now we're going to move on. Yes. The spray, it's a good question. Can I make wudu with a spray bottle? Or water must flow on the limb. With the spray, it doesn't necessarily flow. You see, so if, it, if I spray enough times and it starts to flow, then that's fine. Okay, but if I can't get drops or, 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 or you know, flowing, then it won't work. You see, so it has to. So that's like, I could, can I use a wet towel? It won't work. I must have flowing water. Yes. Yeah. So we're travelers, okay? And because in Makkah Sharif, you don't intend to stay in Makkah Sharif 15 days or more. You intend to go to Makkah for a few days and then you move it to Mina. And, and Arafah and Muzdalifa, and then you're coming back to Mecca. Okay, so here, um, how do I pray Qasr Namaz? With Jamaat, you can pray with Jamaat, right? But some things like in the airport, what Namaz am I going to pray? I'm Isha to pray. How do I pray? Isha, you're a traveler, so you pray two Fars. Do I pray Sunnahs or don't pray Sunnahs? Allah Nabandi, are you doing Hajj? If you if you don't pray sunnah, you're going to sit there and have a falafel sandwich or a coffee from Cafe Nera before you travel. Pray sunnahs. Get it? It's ending better than getting closer to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, if you're on the move different, maybe you're just going to sit and lounge around. Ya Allah, I'm going to pray sunnahs. Yeah, that's good for you, inshallah. Especially now you're trying to do hajj. And so here, I look at, if you're on the road different, 
You're just lounging around. Why are you skanking sunnahs for? You know, why? So here, as a traveler, you know, on a hajj, I don't want to just shortcut, shortcut, shortcut. We had enough shortcuts in our lives. Here, I want to go out and try to take as much as I can. And so you pray, you sort of, when you pray a fard, you pray in jama'ah, you pray two fard, okay? You might find some people joining prayers. They say to you, jama'ah karo. What jama'ah? We know for Hanaf is only in, uh, in Arafah. But in the other madhaib, when you're traveling, they, they permit joining Maghrib and Isha or Dhuhr and Asr in Dhuhr time or Asr time. Some of you know this. That's fine as a traveler. If you feel it's easier for you and you understand the rule, alhamdulillah. And so it could work. You get it where you join the prayers. But some people are like, I don't know what you're talking about. You will learn more about that, inshallah. So here, um, this is, you know, we're on our journey. So Umrah done. Okay, most likely Umrah completed, people go back to where? To their hotel in Azizia. Azizia is a few miles away, right? Um, but it's the way it works is very difficult. It depends, because Azizia is massive, you can end up in different parts of Azizia. Um, Azizia is an, an area, neighborhood in Mecca, but it's really large, where a lot of the shifting packages go. They're cheaper hotels. So they bring down the price of your hotel, uh, hotel, your packages down. Is that clear? They bring them down. Because if you had non-shifting, your packages were probably here 88, 9K. Is that clear? The funny thing about that is that for the five days of Hajj, whilst you're in Arafat and Muzdalifah and Mina, your hotel is sitting there empty yeah, and you're paying 500 pounds a night for it. You, know, you can't sublet it as well. <laughs> but it is what it is because everybody wants that's the you know the peak of the season and everybody wants just a bed and that's the price people pay for drifting but that's a different issue here so when you're in when you once you finish umrah you've got five six days you're in azizia people say from here oh i'm gonna go every day to makkah sharif you know and you know what happens they do but they tire themselves out spiritually, mentally, and physically, because to get from your hotel to Mecca, right, can take hours. You know, sometimes you take a, a taxi, finding a taxi is, is difficult, you see. And so here, they bring you an, a good road band there, you know, they've closed the road. So no, you're stuck. So here, it's very, very, they do, lock, there's lockdown of Mecca, three nights before, two nights before, they just close everything down. And so here it becomes very difficult to sort of go in. So it's possible you on your, as in the shifting packages, the non-shifting are closed, that's their benefit. The non-shifting packages, they have to now pray namaz in Azizia. You might say, what's the point coming? How do you get it? And pray namaz in Azizia. What are you going to do? What's your alternative? You see, what can you do? There's not much you can do. That's how it is. So now, what does that mean? I'm not doing hajj now. Or oh, I'm in my heart, I'm like, I've switched off now. If I can't pray in Makkah, I don't want to pray anywhere else. No, we don't work like that. As Muslims, we're practical, pragmatic, real, you get it. You have no water, you determine. In this situation, you pray in your hotel room, you pray in the local mosque. Okay, exactly. They have, that's where people pray in the local mosque. Get your salah in jama'ah, and then you're like, what do I do now? Do something productive. Read Quran, read Sabbath, read a book, have a plan. You must be busy for three, four, five days. And rest loads. And don't look at somebody as a lazy banda. Let them sleep. What's your problem? You gotta let them rest. The body is tired. I saw this a letter from this from our Sheikh. SubhanAllah, he was so tired and quite elderly. And he was he was praying some prayers in his hotel room because he was quite ill and tired. Even though he was at the Hyatt right next door. Hyatt's so close, mashallah. I'm so glad they got that hotel. It's really close. Because we were in the Fairmont. Hi, 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 Fairmont. Blah, blah, blah. 46th floor. Great. But try to get to the Haram. Takes you 45 minutes. You see, two lifts. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't like Zamzam Tower. I don't think it's, a, you know, on another, on a practical. I, don't think, I think Hyatt's amazing because... When we when we went Hajj last year, we were on the we were at Zamzam, but I used to go and visit Sheikh Samir at the Hayat, and you, Mashallah, from there to there, you cross the road and you're on the white tiles of the Haram, and there's only 18 floors, so it's so so 
you know, practical. Are you all on the Hayat? Yeah, that's a really good choice, inshallah. That's that's very, very practical. So, subhanAllah, he was joining Sabres because he's tired. And he said, I said, Sheikh, are you okay? He goes, yeah, I'm just trying to recuperate. and I'm trying to reserve my energy for the days of Hajj. I thought, oh, subhanAllah. Because people are going all out. All out. All out. But then the sprint's coming up. You're going to lose everything before the Hajj even starts. Are you with me? So here, it rest. Ibadah, sleep, okay, recuperate, you know, whatever you need to do, just your bodies need rest and you need to think about what you're going to do and it's going to be tough, okay? So, so Azizia, enjoy Azizia in that way. Enjoy it, enjoy it, relax. Alhamdulillah, I can't go into my kasa, I pray low, get your salahs in time and so forth. Um, are we okay? And when you miss your jama'ah, you pray as a traveler in your hotel room, you pray your fathers too for Dhuhr and Asr and Isha and so forth. Any questions on that part before we go into the next part? So now that you're ready, we're in Azizia, okay? Um, when the 8th of the Hijjah will come, okay? We're going to look at. These are, okay, let's look at some of this. So 8th of the Hijjah will come. These are the important days of Hajj 8th and the 9th and the 10th, and the 11th, and the 12th. Is that clear? 8th of the Hijjah, we don't know what day it's going to be, because we don't know when the month will enter, because it's going to be according to the moon side. So now, 8th of the Hijjah, at some point, in Azizia, okay, in your rooms, your, you know, your group leaders will tell you, you need to make a niyat, and put your ihram, and you need to take some of your luggage with you, okay, because we're going to be making a niyat, Right? So, same process again. Two rakat to greet your haram. Put your haram, take a bath, sorry. Okay, is that clear? You prepare yourself, nails, there's a need, and so forth. You pray two rakat, you wear your haram, you pray two rakat, then you make a niyat and talbiya. Okay, you're ready to go. Then, at some point, okay, the group will most likely walk, okay, to Mina. The good thing is now, subhanAllah, it's so helpful to have been, right? So last year, our walk was an hour. We walked in the evening. It was one of the most beautiful walks of my life. I'm not making up. It was out of this world. It was just different. Right? It was just different. Millions upon millions, you know, like or hundreds of thousands of people you cross. But, and we walked, right? And it couldn't have been easy, but it was, it was a long walk to get to our camp the night before. And we got in. We got our places and so forth, and then we stayed the night there, okay, and, and the next, we went the night before actually, the night earlier, and so you, you need to go to Mina, you're going to be in these tents, it's completely different, if you've been camping with scra- scouts, this is nothing like, it's different, okay, very different, okay, and so you're going to go into Mina, Mina is a camp city, and it's very, very difficult, it's well, everything's numbered, okay, um, but it's all the same, so you can easily get confused. But um, everybody has like a, a room like this as a tent, fireproof, aircon, you got good there, little mattresses, cushions, really thick but flimsy. You fall off them. And if you're really big, I, I said to my cousin, how did, you, how did you deal with it? He goes, man, strategy. Go, what did you do? He goes, I said to the guy next to him, a guy and to I said one on the two, Torah guy, because I found some space. <laughs> He's really big, mashallah. So it's not easy. Elderly people, it's not going to be easy. Is that clear? But inshallah, we, people are helpful, alhamdulillah. Okay? Um, and so you, you grab a gada and you say, Bismillah. You know, you just, you, and the men and women are separated at that point. They all go to different, they're next to each other, different tent. You got your mom with you, your wife with you, should be separate. Okay, you can talk because you can meet in the alleyways, and the toilet facilities become very uncomfortable. Okay, so uh, you know, go easy on the mangoes and whatever else you know juices. We have to go easy because you can have 10, 15 people in the toilet um, cubicle waiting at the height of it, unless you go the right times. Okay, I'm glad sometimes they let you in. They love young ch- kids. Kids jump the queue all the time. And Bazurg as well, alhamdulillah, they let them go. Okay, but it's it's not easy. So anyhow, um, after telling you all the nice parts, let's carry on. Arkan integrals of Hajj. The Hajj is about Arafah. This is the key integral. You got your ihram on, right? Now got standing in Arafat, 
even for a moment from Zawal, which is at Zohar time, right? Just after Zohar, um, oh sorry, after, just after Zawal starts Zohar, right? Just after midday, um, until okay, until the Fajr of the next day. Now you just need to grasp this, okay? That the Arafat day is the Farz. Is that clear? In practice, um, you know, when you look at Arafat, okay, a lot of the coaches sort of go, you know, the, on the ninth day, you're in Mina, okay, you're praying in the Mazan there, you pray in your tents, Jamaat, okay, and then there's no masjid there, so you're sort of praying inside, and then they tell you, you your coaches arrive, they're very well organized in that, you have a camp number, and we were 38 last year, okay, I have got the little card on my table, and then when, the, when your time comes, they call you, you jump on a coach, and the coach will take you with coach number 38, and it will go to tent number 38 in Arafat, the plains of Arafat. So it's very well organized in terms of numericals, okay? Um, so when you enter Arafat, And you enter in the middle, and I'm on it. So I click, cause that's the that's the one I need to make count because that's where your biggest physical and spiritual energy is gonna go on du'as, du'as. You gonna that's the day of du'a. Okay, and I'm gonna find a. I have to have a plan. I have a book. I have things in my mind that I want from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in dunya and akhirat for my children, my children. You get it? That's the day. You might have a list of names of. People, that's where you need them, right? Is that clear? So here, this is the fart. There's nothing. I mean, you have to be in Arafat, right? Arafat is massive. You have to just be in that area, and the fart is complete. You're being there. This is why when people are unconscious in hospitals, Allah bless the the, the, the system that they they bring them in ambulances, hadwa ill, and unconscious. You know, uh, they bring them in ambulance and drive to Arafat. So at least the Hajj is fulfilled because they got the fart. They can do the rest of the things, right? Even though they're unconscious, they drive them through Arafat at that time. So they've been there for a moment, okay? And then you've got... Um, what's this? So the, the, this is the first one. The second one is what we call um, Tawaf al-Ifada or Tawaf al-Ziyarat. Okay? So Arafat is ninth of the hijjah Yeah? Eighth of the hijjah is when I wear my ihram go to Mina. Ninth of the hijjah is Arafat. Okay, that's the key. From Zuhr up until Fajr, but really you're going to stay until Maghrib. The Fars can be completed up to the Fajr of the next morning. So somebody got late and they arrived at Maghrib and they still get the Fars in because they're there for a moment. Is that clear? But they missed the wajib of being late. They need to be there from Zuhr. So here, um, Arafat, 9th of Zulhijjah. This is the core Rukun. Okay? Al Hajju Arafat, the Prophet was reported to have said. So Hajj is about Arafat. The second one that you have is. The, the tawaf, okay, after the Arafat, tawaf is ziyara. This is also a fard of hajj. So if I missed everything else and I got these two in, okay, right, okay, then your hajj can still be saved. The hajj can still be saved. Some people work like this. They do the bare minimum. They go, suntaran, they just fard. Allah only wants to do fard. They don't read sunnahs. They don't read nafal. Just fard. Okay. That, those people, you better take note, this one helps you, this is what you need. Okay, but really people are, do much more, alhamdulillah. So this is the key things. Now in terms of wajibat, okay, we've got Allahumma sallam sallam barik alayhi. Um, I want to just keep this in front of me. Here we are. Allah. Now. There we are. So we say, um, Wajibat say ihram at the point of miqat. You have to have your ihram on before you enter the miqat. This is why we get it on and make the intention on the plane. Some leave it on the plane. They go, I'm going to make it when we get really close. On the airplane, the pilot tends to make an annunciation. Please get your ihrams on. If somebody slept through it, it becomes an issue. Okay, is that clear? So here, um, you get to get ihram on. Um, wukuf at muzdalifa. Wukuf means to stand. Okay? And in and, and, and Hajj, you have Makkah Sharif, then you go to Mina, the camps, eh? then you're going to go to Arafat, 
Okay, and then from Arafat after Maghrib on that 10th, you're going to walk to, okay, Muzdalifa or you take a coach to Muzdalifa. Remember, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam rode on a camel, okay. So some people like to walk, but, you know, another brother, just look to your right and left, is your mum with you? Okay, as your, your wife's with you, sometimes the wife needs to look at her husband again, isn't he? Basra, yeah, you get it. Look at that because they've got a long way to go, yeah. No, no, sunnat, sunnat, I agree with you, but is he going to make it? You, you need to get to Muzdalifa, okay, still roughed up, and then from there you need to get to um, Ar- Mina again to stone, and then you get to Makkah to make the wall. So just look around for a moment, sunnat, okay, but are you sure? Are you sure you don't want to ride on the bus? A bit more easier. So just think about that. Some people are actually fine. Okay. But, and so here, um, you can either walk, okay, or you ride a coach. The coach will take you, coach number 38, from Arafat to a plane. It's like, it's actually, um, it's sort of fenced areas, okay. Open areas, they're all fenced, number 38, everybody who's 38 goes in there, in Ms. Muzdalifa. There's no tent, it's just open space, and like, where's my bed? No bed. Where's my tent? No tent. Chasha, oh, we call it. Pani, Lodo, you find a good luck to you. It, it, Muzdalifa is like that. And Muzdalifa, I would say, Khalasa would agree with this, Allah bless whoever gave us a small sponge. Little light ma- was it light mattress, Khalasab? Who gave them in Arafat? Somebody gave them out. They like mat. They were they were good because in Muzdalifa you got stones everywhere, pebbles, and you have to. Some people have they already had some carpet rugs there, which were brilliant. First come, first serve. And I'll be honest with you, people don't care. They look, pretend a lot of people don't look at you just so that they're not, they're not obliged to give it to you because they're roughed up. They're like, oh, I'm going to sleep, mate. A lot of that, even there, nobody really cares because you're bust, you're tired, you're f- done, mate. And that's just not even halfway yet. So here, I'm saying pace yourself, pace yourself, prepare yourself. You know, a little a camping mat, something will make a big difference for to your sleep if you do, if you intend to sleep. So and 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 sleep there, you're in the open air. Everybody's looking at you, and men and women are very close proximity, and some. You know, you people tend to split them up, but really outside that you're done. And men got their harams on, they've got to sleep with their harams on. It's, um, you know, it's really difficult. And so here, just, you know, take your little mattress or something that so you can get good little sleep in. Um, I couldn't sleep the whole night. I was tossing and turning and tossing and turning. I was just so worried that I, I didn't want to go to the toilet because I looked as like, a, I've never seen a queue so long. So I said, don't drink water. I could take a little sip and that's it. And then I was like conscious. I got to pray Fajr in the morning. We got there late at night, midnight is time. And people are still coming in and they're coming in and they're coming in. They keep coming the whole night. And there's a you know, large area. It just keeps filling up, filling up, filling up. And in Muzdalifa, it was, re- but it was one of the best nights of my life because you couldn't plan it. You couldn't plan that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a reason for why people go to Muzdalifa. And... and you can smell amazing things spiritually. Like something's happening. And these are people who just fulfill the, fulfill the fard of hajj. And they're there. They're all there equally in the air, in the open. It's a great feeling. Really is something really, really special. And so you stay in Muzdalifa, okay, um, on, the, on, the, on the way back from Arafah. On that night, it's the night of Eid. It's the night of Eid in England, there in Southall. Okay, just to get get it right, get it. everybody's getting ready for their Eid namaz tomorrow morning. You're in Zalifa, like that. Yeah? And then, the next morning, after Fajr Khalid Sab, any Sunday, they're not listening to us. What do we say to them? Please, stay close. Pack your stuff up. Suntan paro, farz paro, naso. Isn't that what he said? Nisi Sunday, they were three, four minutes later, and the coaches were, the roads were jam-packed. So we got out early, and those who managed to get onto the coaches early, straight after Fajr. Allahu Akbar, we had the drive of our lives nice and easy back to Mina. And the ones who were slight, unorganized, you know, still tapo properly and all the rest of it, they were 10, 15 minutes later, 
and they t it took them three hours to get through the traffic. Because you're talking, you're, you're talking about hundreds of thousands of coaches all thinking the same. So you have to be ready, you have to be planned, you're prepared to get out, because then you go to Mina. And either you take the code or you walk, okay? You're talking lots of kilometers, okay? It's not easy. And then when you get back to Mina, back to your tents again, you put your stuff down, okay? Then they have this system where they let each tent go, you know, to go and stone at a certain time. And on the day of Eid in England, we will then have been in Muzdalifah, prayed, Fajr, got to back to Mina, and then got ourselves, composed ourselves, and then go, taking the concrete that the stones and the pebbles we had collected in Muzdalifah, okay, in our little bags, and take them to go and stone the shaitan in, in, in Mina. And that, and alhamdulillah, um, that's much closer than last year for our group, you know. And then you go and you walk, and you know what, shukr, alhamdulillah, I went to Hajj in 1999, and I remember going to stone to the shaitan, and I was so pumped up, and I couldn't understand, right, why. I just wanted to kill the shaitan, right. Take my country and wait. I can remember the feeling, right, marching, marching, bismillah. And then I remember being next to a pillar like that, with a copper next to me, thinking, what are you here for? And the crowds were just, you know, because everybody was trying to go and hit the same. Imagine this area here. Three million people have to stone this big shaitan here, pillar. Come in the same way, go out the same way. You know, alhamdulillah, the mina stoning is it's just one of the great, it's one of the wonders of the world. They have done such an amazing job, the Saudis. The way they've designed it, it is a long walk, but it's so nice and so easy. Inshallah, you don't get ever get scared of the crowds. Very, very well organized. They come in, they go different tunnels through the mountain. You walk for 45 minutes to an hour. And our camps, the European camps, John Bujita Pichas are We are the furthest away from the stoning places. So the Europeans, the modern Western people, they make them walk. <laughs> the Pakistanis, the Indians, they're all nice and close. We are the furthest away. So our walk's the longest. Okay, is that clear? And then subhanAllah, you arrive and how beautiful and easy it was to stone. You know, it was, a, it was amazing. And you, whenever you come to stone, never go for the first corner. You know, all the rush comes towards the first corner. So imagine this is, this curtains the stoning. You come in like this incredibly wide space, right? And you approach it. Don't go from this corner. All there is, there's enough space to walk around the crowd and come to the other corner. So everybody's standing here, or there. You just walk gently. You walk around. Well, you come in all empty near the uh, second half of it. It's all sort of fairly like. So here, then you're going to stone. Then you're going to go back, okay, most likely back to your... Um, Mina Hotel, okay, in Azizia, and, uh, sorry, Azizia Hotel, and then you're going to wait. You're going to wait for them to give you the green light, say your kurbani have been completed, because the group leaders tend to take control of that. Once they give you the green light, you say, Alhamdulillah, let's go, let's go where? Nah, go shave your hair off. Go, 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 Ganda, Bismillah, get it off, okay. And the women do the same, they cut their hair, and then they free themselves from the ihram, they can change their clothes. They wear normal clothes again. You do, I tell you, it's alhamdulillah. Finally, to be able to back into your normal clothes, okay. And then people march, right? Okay. And then they go to Makkah. Okay, then they go to Makkah Sharif, okay. On that same E-day, everything's happening on E-day. By the evening, okay, mashallah, you get to Makkah. I, when I went and I did, and I did my hajj in 99, ya Allah, it took, I went, I went on ground floor, Chalk, I couldn't move. I went first floor, I couldn't move. I went to the roof, I couldn't move. That time I got no choice. Just get in anywhere. So I went to first floor and made my tawaf there. It took me three hours or something. Just a tawaf. This year I was saying to people, oh man, five hours, four hours. When we went to make tawaf, I don't know, it took us 20 minutes. So timing is really important. Listening to your groups. And sometimes it can work and sometimes it's just out of your control. So don't take 20 minutes, take 6 hours as a standard, just to say mentally you know. But um, then you come to Makkah, you make tawaf, okay, of ziyara, okay, is that clear? And then you do your, your sa'i, okay, and then you, alhamdulillah, then you're hajisab. Then you can add it to your name, al-hajj, 
Al Hajjah. Okay. That and then you once you're done, then what you do, you spend the nights okay, of the eleventh and the twelfth back in as is in, in Mina, in the camps again. So then you need to get back to Mina. It's a long way, right? So some people might go back to the hotel in Azizia, and then because you need to spend half of the night, right? From Maghrib to Fajr, you need to spend half of that night in your camps to fulfill the Sunnah. So you could stay in Azizia and make sure you get to your camp for half the night. That works fine. So you spend half the night there. The next morning you wake up and you go and stone eh, all three shaitans. And then you can, you can come back, go back to your hotel again in Azizia, or you go back to your tents again. Okay, and then make sure you're there for half the night again. And you can do two nights, and you can also do the third night that we did. We fulfilled the Sunnah of the Prophet. We did the, the 11th, and the 12th, and the 13th. Yep. Khutbah is going to be in Arafat. I'm going to come to that, okay? So here, Khutbah is on the day of Arafat after Dhuhr. And so that's a good one for the men, isn't it? It's a really good one for those, you know, uh, healthy and fit that go, you have a good little, good little sweat. I remember you went, didn't you? Did you go, Khalid? Or was your brother? They had a good time, didn't they? Um, so these are so we talk about the fard now. We talk about wajibat. So these are in Ihram at the point miqat, standing in Muzdalifa for that night for a moment after Fajr. That's the that's the wajib. So people come in at night and then they pray the Maghrib and Isha joint. Okay, and then they wait for Fajr. Wait for Fajr. Fajr comes in. They wait for a moment to pray the Fajr and then they go and they fulfill the Sunnah. Then you got tawaf ziyara in the days of Nahr. Okay. Um, to get the tawaf is tawaf is yara is fard, but to have it in the days of sacrifice is wajib. So if somebody becomes unconscious, for example, they're in in a um, in hospital, they can always do tawaf yara even afterwards, and they don't have to give dam because they missed the days. Okay, that's the point here. And sa'i seven rounds, safa marwa ain. Essential tawaf al wada. You have something called. You have different tawafs. You have one for umrah, tawaf al qudum. Okay, when you arrive, you have Tawaf Zarat and Tawaf al Fada. Okay, and then you've also got the Tawaf of Wada when you leave Makkah Sharif and you're going to go to Medina Sharif, and so that's wajib as well. You've got to get that. Unlike in Umrah, in Umrah is not wajib. In Umrah, you don't have to do it. You know, if you did it, it's good. If you missed it, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be sinful. But in Hajj, you have to get that Tawaf done. The key thing about this Tawaf is it doesn't have to be the last thing that you do. Sometimes people think, na akhri cheese. And they, you know what they do? Subhanallah, they sometimes leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it, and then they do it. And they do it when the coach is supposed to leave. So now the whole coach is waiting for you to stop crying, you know, and finish your spiritual journey and come back to the coach and say, now I'm happy. Let's go now. You get it? And that's not fair, is it? And that's where you have to be very careful. You don't ever do that to the group. It's so important that if this thing on a personal level, as long as it's not a fard and wajib, you know, that I don't make other people suffer. You see, it's really important because it's about, and this is what the deen's about, the deen's about helping people and, and aiding people and, and so forth. So, khidmah. To pray two rakahs at the end of every tawaf, we've done that. <laughs> don't, what, how did you read this? Did you read it Rami or Rami? And if you say to me, Astaghfirullah tu gal kar diye, you know, you open it to Abi Masjid Kandar, you astaghfirullah, you can't open it to So I said to you, no, I didn't swear. Because Rami and Rami, Rami is the, is the accent. Rami in Arabic means the one who throws. So every Hadi at some point is Rami. <laughs> okay. Are you with me? Because they have to throw the Kankriya. Um, so Rami is throwing. Kankriya, Pankana. Okay. And so here, um, that's Rami, okay, stoning. Um, the three Jamarat on the days of Nahar, um, and shaving and trimming the hair in the Haram, okay, and the days of Nahar. So here, in your mind, you're saying, oh, I think I'll get this now. Okay, you go there, you do Umrah. Okay, Umrah is Ihram, Tawaf, Sa'i, and shave your head and cut your head. I got it, I got it. Then, you wait for the days of Hajj to arrive, okay. On the 8th of the Hijjah, I'm going to put my Umrah and my Ihram on again. Now I'm going to do Hajj. I don't know Umrah, I'm going to Hajj. I got it. On the 8th, we put our Ihram on, make the need. Yep. Then we go 
from our hotel in Azizia or wherever you are in Mecca to where? Mina, got it. Intensity. Is that clear? I'm going to spend the night there as the Prophet prays, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, and Fajr. In the morning after Fajr, at some point, my groups can say, Get ready, get ready, tiyari, tiyari, tiyari. Go chara ya anytime in the next two, three hours, tiyara na. You better take that seriously. They're not blagging it. Because when the call comes, you must run. Okay. When the call comes, jali jali, you grab your stuff that you need now for Arafat and Muzdalifa. Because you'll be back here again tomorrow. So whatever I need, don't take your whole suitcase. Dwaiya are important. Okay, but shopping, leave it. Okay, here you take your stuff. And now you're going to go on the fr- on the morning of the yeah, Arafat to Arafat. And in Arafat, you're going to end up in your own tent. And there you're going to say, Bismillah. At Dhuhr, they're going to do a khutbah in the masjid. And some will go. Otherwise, you are going to get on this dua. Get it? How am I going to make this dua? You pray namaz there. Okay. You join Dhuhr and Asr. Okay. In Jamaat. Okay. And then you're going to, and you join there. You pray Dhuhr and Asr in Dhuhr time. Okay. And you pray four sunnahs, two fards of Dhuhr. They get up again, they pray two fards of Asr straight away. That means why? So you've got no namaz to pray until Maghrib. So you can free yourself for dua. Dua, my dua lasts one minute. Make a karsan, char gante, panj gante. You need to think about that. It doesn't mean that I'm going to be there for five hours. We were in this group and um, we were with some Salafis, right? Bye, thank you. And um, we, in the group, right? So we had, um, uh, but they were very respectful, alhamdulillah. Really, we, we all got on very well. We respected each other's positions. And we were sitting in this tent and they don't really do a lot of group zikr, even though that day they did dua, okay, uh, together. After a while, I thought, this is not working. Everybody's looking at each other. And one thing I remember from that day is they give you these big lunches, yeah? And everybody's hungry. They grab a box each. I'll tell you now, you can't eat that. You can't finish that. So make sure you don't end up doing guna of wasting food. Make sure you share with somebody who said, go half, half. Okay, but dabbe koli koli. You see, remember that? A lot of things like this. Anyhow, this pala, the best moment for myself was when I left the tent. I thought I need to get out of here. I went out. I went outside and I see, it's like you've seen the real world, right? All these people are there, standing, facing Mecca, with their hands up, some in the corners, near tents, everywhere, under trees, and just crying and crying. I thought, wow. And that's what I, that was a great moment for me. I thought, amazing, you know? And that, that's what I thought about. Go out, stand under the sun like the Prophet did. Some people go to Jabal Rahmat. Uh, in, uh, in, in Arafat and this, where Rasulullah pitched tent and st- stood. So if you can, go there, you know, with your groups and stand there and make dua. And it's a real buzz there because it's like a, it's like a, a spiritual carnival because everybody's on the same thing. You will find group after group making duas. And you can join any group and God knows whose duas people accept and they're all on it. And it's beautiful in different languages, mashallah. So Arafat about dua. I have dua books ready. I understand my duas. I've thought about it. I've planned it. Some duas I'm going to read again and again. I'm going to read some Quran. Okay? I'm going to read, do some dhikr. Okay? I'm going to, and then you just mix it up like this. Is that clear? There's no harm if somebody needs rest a little bit. and Not an issue. You get it? But especially the elder lot and so forth. So here, um, now you're with me. Then you come back in the evening. Sorry, from Arafat you go to? Muzdalifa. Muzdalifa, you go after Maghrib. You're going to pray. You're not going to pray Maghrib namaz. It's really weird. You're not praying Maghrib. You know Maghrib time, but you can't pray. You leave Maghrib. You're going to pray Maghrib and Muzdalifa. Hazrat Pak joined Maghrib and Isha and Muzdalifa. So you pray Maghrib when you get to Muzdalifa. Maghrib and Isha. You pray three fard of Maghrib, and then Iqamah is called, and then you pray the two fard of Isha. Okay? And then you pray your sunnahs and your witr and you have the whole night there. Then in the morning after Fajr, you will leave to go and do Kankriya. Is that clear? So you take your Kankriya that you gather at Muzdalifa, okay? And you take them and then you go to your camp, put your stuff down and off you go. To do the stoning, then you go to your hotel, you wait for the Qurbani news to come in. Qurbani news has arrived, you go shave your heads, okay? You cut your hair and off you go, get ready. Plan. You might decide as a group. I'll be in 
Please, sabki, thake away, everybody rest for an hour or two. Rest, and then we'll go. And some will say, no, I'm not resting, bro, I'm up for this, let's go for it. And they'll go, they can go. Most likely people tend to go independently. And then you go to Makkah, you make tawaf on the Kaaba, and you make your sa'i, and then you complete, and you come back again. So I just went through that again, okay? So now you can see here, um, here to be free from minor, major, rich and pure during tawaf and you have to have wudu for tawaf. Uh, not for sa'i. For sa'i, you don't need to have wudu as a prerequisite. Is that clear? But of course, it's better to make wudu for sa'i, okay? Um, but for tawaf, you must make sure. So if somebody is elderly, they break their wudu and sa'i, they may carry on, okay? They may carry on. Um, to avoid prohibitions, we know there's stitching stuff, okay? Sunnahs of Hajj, ghusl and wudu for ihram. Ah, oh, I'm getting late. You know, I haven't had a ghusl. Oh, Allah, our no, flight's about to go. Run. But I need to have a ghusl. No, because now... It's not farz for you to have ghusl, it's sunnah. And you're too late to have it. So can I wear my ihram without ghusl? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Is that clear? So just trying to understand things. Two new pieces of cloth of ihram or wash them white. This is back to, can I use old? You may, it's better to use new. Um, towels or cotton? Anybody got a preference? Towels. Cotton. Can you wear both? Um, in, alhamdulillah, excessive. There's a two rakas. We've done it. Ex- lots of talbiya. Labbaik Allah. It's beautiful, man. It is so beautiful to hear a crowd and crowds. MashaAllah. Then you've got Tawafi Qudum, which was when you arrived, which comes to your sort of Umrah. And to make as many Tawafs as possible. How many Tawafs do you reckon a person can make in Hajj? I, I don't want to put no numbers, it's down to you, you know, but once you finish, you can do lots of umrahs if you wanted to, you can do lots of tawafs, but tawafs is the best thing to do, okay. Um, Ittiba, we, play, we said when you put the kapra under your uh, right shoulder, so have the right shoulder bare, is part of the sunnah. So if you forgot what happens, dam, no dam, because it's sunnah, no dam. Dam is for wajibs. So if I forgot to make my shoulder uh, 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 bare, right, khalas, relax. Just do it now that you remember. If you missed it, you missed it. Okay? No sadqa. Okay? Ramal, as explained, and you jog. Okay? Is that clear? This is going to happen for every tawaf after which there is a sa'i. Okay? So here, it, you don't do this in normal tawaf from the Kaaba. Normal tawaf in, you know, normal clothes, okay, which is what we call nafal tawaf, you don't do ramal. Only in the umrah, okay, or in a tawaf which has a sa'i after it, okay, which is going to be in the hajj. And uh, istilam al-hajr, at the beginning of each of the rounds of um, um, the tawaf, okay, you have to give salams to Hajj Aswad. And to stay in Mina, this is sunnah, so if you missed it, you carry on. Is that clear? To stay in Mina for the days of Nahar and the days of Qurbani. Nahar means Qurbani. Okay. Now, prohibitions, okay? These are, um, the program should abstain from the things, okay? We said this, anything that's haram in Sharia. If you find yourself said something haram or something, you know, you shouldn't, say astaghfirullah. This is why I say, um, smoking, try to stop, quit before you go. I don't think it's it's nice to, you know, when you're in your ihram and you're doing something which is against the Sharia, you know, in your ihram, and you smell, it doesn't smell great as well, and you know that, okay? So try, ask Allah to open your heart, find a way to get rid of. To be honest with you, this is one of the best opportunities you'll have in life to get rid of things that you don't like doing in life. Yeah, there's haram things that everybody may end up doing and they have their own weaknesses, okay? Whether it's certain things they watch or certain things, lifestyles, whatever, this is the chance. If you can't do it now, then it's really... But if you're already thinking, oh, after Hajj, I'll take my hijab off again, that's not a good way to approach it. Or I'll stop smoking for... The Hajj and then after Hajj, I'll go on cigars then. Okay, here, I don't think that's a good idea. I think you should sincerely ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, I really intend to change. I'm going to do my best. You help me. For you to say, oh, calm, my hair is so beautiful. And you know, uh, you, I, I think you shouldn't say that. You should say, I'm going to try. And if your heart's saying, I am going to take it off afterwards, you should try to tell your heart, inshallah, you're not. You see, so then, then you're sincere and try and change. And if you're already saying, you know, there's certain things that each person has their weaknesses. So you should go for that because it's a great time to let go. You know, bad habits of a lifetime. 
this is the time when you can really change. It is there for change. It transforms people's lives forever. So, um, and so conjugal relationship, we mentioned this, you know, uh, family life and that type of thing. We said in the, during the Umar of Ashur, no, and then after you've cut your hair up until you put your haram on for Hajj again, there's no um, problem there. And after the Tawaf of Ziyarat and the Sa'id, then you're, when you're complete Hajj, and all those things are halal again. Insulting our argumentation and use of opinion. Now look, here we go. Lovely tents, look at that. Ah. Oh. Beautiful. Allah is beautiful. You know who has some of the best tents? Guess. The Indo pack. I mean, I'm not, I'm not on about the five star, you know, six star, seven star packages. They have it, mashallah. Okay. You know, they have like, you know, grilled chicken going around and they have everything, right? They just roll out of bed and they go stone the shaitan. You see, it's so close. But that's that's fine for some people, you know. But I think there's a real benefit and real ex- greatness in this experience that you have, you know, where you're stripped of all these comforts of this life and you're roughed up, man. You're roughed up, really roughed up. It's a real benefit. So the the Indo packs are really well organized. The Pakistanis and the Indians and Bangladeshis, man, their tents are am- even the mattresses they're nailed. Because we're, we've got, I don't know, from Europe, right? They give us really thick mattresses. Okay, as if, you know, we need that thick mattress to... But they're not, they're, it doesn't really help. So I found them to be really well organized, mashallah. Um, look at the roads. They go on forever. Can you see that road? No. So you all walk in there to go to Jamarat. That's Jamarat at the end. Inside this book, there's some wonderful images. This book is really well done, very practical, very, very well done. Here we go. What day are we on? 8th of the Hijjah. Re-enter Ihram as you did for Umrah, but this time make an intention for Hajj. So when you read the intention, Nawaitu Al-Hajjah. It's like that, you're going to intend Hajj here. If you're doing Hajj for somebody else, you make that intention, don't you? Because I'm doing Hajj for so and so. All rulings of Ihram apply again. Up until that moment, okay? You can shower, change your clothes, put perfume on, all the rest of it. But now, on the 8th of the Hijjah, the ruling was going in. Pack a small bag with a, chan- with a change of clothes, toiletries, towel, ex- uh, extra ihram for men, medication. Very important, extra ihram. Why? Because when you're showering or you're washing in Mina, in the, in, it can easily fall down and get become soiled. Sometimes, you know, just moving around from one place to another, like Arafat, it becomes dirty and so forth. So you just change it. Having dust on your ihram or for it to change with, with dirt, natural dirt, is not is not a najasat. Najasat is very different. So here, it's good to have an extra clothing. Okay. What else do you need? Um, what else do you need there, Khalid sir? You can do that. So, uh, okay. Leave for minute after sunrise by bus. Leaving early is not sunnah. So this is... Um, no. Recite talbiyah while traveling. Arrive in minute and settle into the tent. Um, mustahab to pray five prayers in minute. Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha and Fajr. There's no... Like I said, Jamaat is in your tents. Okay? That's what happens. And begin to recite takbirat of tashriq after Fajr Salah. So even as a Hajji, um, on the on the day of Arafat in the morning after Fajr, you read your takbir. Like Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, exactly. like they do and like we do here. Uh, this is the ninth, uh, the ninth of the Hijjah from Fajr and Dhuhr and Asr, Maghrib and Isha, and that will go on for 23 prayers. Um, Sunnah to spend the night. Uh, so that night you spend in Mina. This is the night of Arafat. The next day is Arafat, isn't it? So the night of Arafat, you're in Mina. SubhanAllah. Um, no prescribed acts, but spend the time in some type of dhikr at all times. I found, I think you'll agree with this, anyway, between Hajj, it's very easy to just laze about and do nothing. And so you have to be smart enough to always be busy and engaged. You're always telling yourself, okay, let's read some sabab. Okay, and change it around. Use your tasbih, read some part of a fiqh book or sirah book, and just keep going around. Yeah, even where sometimes you contemplate and some time for dua, just keep moving around. It's very easy to have a group, right? Suddenly you've got people in your group, some who need guidance. They need to be led. 
And suddenly you find yourself just following them. You don't want that to happen. You want to know. And, rem- and you might sometimes you remind me, oh, Allah Nabi 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 Talking about Liverpool and their transfer, you know, and all the rest of it. Because people got their internet going, isn't it? So they could easily just tap in and check. And so here, I, th- I think it's important to remind people. Sometimes in Araf and Mina, you know, the other thing you find, lots of people's auras uncovered. Yeah, you tell them, Haji, Haji, Haji. That's you need to tell them. Sometimes you might just take a cup and cover it for them. Because people don't realize it. So there's a lot of this ordering the good, forbidding the evil, reminding people of good and so forth. But it's how do I make the most of it? Okay. Um, prepare yourself for the big day tomorrow. What's the day, big day tomorrow? Arafah. Arafah. Naam. Subhanallah. So this is uh, lots of rest. Lots of rest, right? Very good. Um, what's this? Yeah, Jabli Rahmat, the plain of Arafat. And where did Hazur Park stand, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Because when we go on Umrah, they all want to get up there. Yeah? And Hazur Park Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood at the foothill. So if you can get there, great. You know, from our tent, it took us about 40 minutes, you know, to get to Jabli Rahmat. Because Arafat massive. And it's very, very hot. And the crowds are, subhanAllah. So you need to go early and you need to sort of have an understanding of the bearings, otherwise you can get lost. So that that's and that's a beautiful subhanallah. Here we go. Leave for Arafah after Fajr. Six miles from Mina. So either you walk, but normally they take the, the coaches. Um Wukuf standing in Arafah key, we said that the Prophet Hajj is Arafah. Must spend at least a moment between Zawal. A Zawal is just just before Dhuhr, okay? On the ninth of the Hijjah and dawn of tenth. But you would you would stay there inshallah from Dhuhr up until Maghrib, okay? Um no. Take care of personal needs, food, washroom, etc. before Dhuhr. When Dhuhr enters, you want to have done all that stuff. And the, the queues can be really long. Okay, so you wanna go always, whenever you need to go to the bathroom, always plan early. Always plan early. Give yourself ample time. It takes a long time queuing up because there's a lot of people. And so here, please, when you feel the slightest sort of need, get ready mentally, you know, go and you know get there in, t- in, in turn um, in, in early. And so here, uh, come Zohar, I want to be ready to go into this, okay? So sunnah to take ghusl before Zohar. You can, they have showers there. They have showers in Mina and have showers in, in Arafat, okay? So you could easily have a shower. Sometimes it's quicker to have a shower than to make wudu. But it's not nice when you get elderly people outside and you're doing your British shower. Because yeah, some do that. They take ages. You see, and that's not fair. You've got 10 people outside and you can see on the, the last thing you need is that Haji making dua against you. And he's waiting out there and you can see you've got your shower on. Seriously, you can see it in their faces. And some wali or bazurk from those people who's real need and you're having a shower. You know, it's not about having a shower, it's about washing sins away. <laughs> You know, go and have a different type of shower. So here, sometimes there's a need, it's not a problem. But I think sometimes you find people, there's, you know, these super clean people, their focus remains on the outward and they forget they need to focus on the inward. You know, sometimes, uh, that's what I found. I, I found a lot of that happening. Um, and I'm not to judge, they could be the greatest awliya, so I'm sorry, oh, wali, but I, I'm just saying, out, wali, practically, that's what happens. Um, pray the hut to rakaz, only combined with asr if you... Offer prayer behind the Imam of Hajj at Masjid Nimrah. Others allow that jama'at to take place. So you can follow your, your Imam in that. Wukuf, wukuf means to stand. So at some point you want to stand outside. So you tell your children, better take me outside. Let's go outside. Even for a short period of time, I want to fulfill the sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Standing and facing Arafah with your hands up. Okay, making dua. If you feel shy, because look, if I'm in a tent... And I want to cry. And I'm looking at my friend thinking, oh God. You know, my cousin's there, my mother-in-law's there, my, you know, somebody I have to go. I don't get away from here. So what to do is go outside. Go away from people where nobody knows you. I found that to be brilliant. You know, go just outside. You don't need to go far. And you're alone. And then now you can do your own thing. Because sometimes it's really hard with people around you to be your, yourself. Um, Station of forgiveness, do not waste a moment, you may never return again. Absolutely. Arafah is just out of this world. And so that's why being well planned, okay, having good preparation really helps. 
no set routine. There's nothing fixed from the Prophet Sallallahu That's beautiful because then you can make it your own, right? So, um, so you 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 plan. You have there's lots of our books. You know, you can take extra, extra You might take Dalai Khairat, Durud al Salam upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You might say, I'm going to read Quran. And during the Arafat, I'm going to read Surah Yasin. Ask Allah for this need and that need. You might say, I'm going to finish my Quran, Yom Arafat. You might read your Quran and line it up for Khatm Quran on Arafat. Hey, that's some thinking now. Do you see my point here? So here's lots of things that you can do because remember, du'as are accepted. Okay? You might have a direct, you might have a sadaqah going out automatically from your bank account when you're whilst you're there. You can actually do that on your phone, right? There's lots of things you can do, subhanAllah. Um, true wukuf is absolute focus. This is focus, focus. Budayl bin Iyad once said on the plane of Arafat, should this huge assembly of people come begging for a dirham at the door of the most generous person, do you ever foresee that, I, that he should send them disappointed? The people responded, no, we cannot see him refusing them. Budayl said, I swear by Allah that for Allah to forgive them all is so much easier than for the generous person to grant them a dirham. What you can't do, Yawm Arafat, is to go in thinking, my guna, itna bura guna, that Allah can't forgive me, a'udhu billah. It is sinful to go to Arafat and leave thinking you haven't been forgiven. Yeah, you must have good opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same Rabb who brought you there and brought millions there, you know, has brought you to forgive you. You know, you should enjoy that moment that Allah Akbar, I can taste, you know, what forgiveness feels like and like. So there's a real beauty to that now. And this is why it's good to deal with your heart spiritually. You know, think about the spiritual things. And I find a lot of these Oliya stories, Sahaba stories are really nice. There's a lot of good series out there, you know, companions of the Prophet. Um, you know, you can get you know, like Nurdin Durki and there's a the, the red and the blue one, who's that by again? Mets publication. They're good there, because you know, these stories leave you with a message. Okay, they're good to sort of take with you, perhaps. Um, you guys, are, are we okay? How long do we have left? What, do, you reckon, do you reckon there's a chance I could put them to sleep? They look really tired. Like you have sat a long time today, subhanAllah. This is like, huh? Alhamdulillah. I was just going to say this is getting really, you know, really long. And I was thinking about doing another few more. Because it's slow and you, you, high preparation is time. You know, look at the sp- spiritual elements, look at some of the monuments, look at the history of the Kaaba and the Haram. So maybe next Sunday I might try something. Okay. So, um, um, this, so here after sunset, um, don't make, don't pray Maghrib, but get ready to go to Muzalifa. And it can, it, our coach took us four hours. They said, the coach is coming. Some went walking. They said, coach is coming. And the coach came four hours later. So that's what they mean by coming. Uh, what did we do? We, I slept for a bit. I slept for 45 minutes to an hour. Brilliant. Because I slept. When I went to Muzalifa, I couldn't sleep. So I was able to stay awake the whole night or most of the night. So it could help. If the coach is not coming, lie down for a bit. And me say, Joe, Bismillah. Nice sleep in Arafat. Because the fard has been done already, right? So post Maghrib, just get a nap, you know, inshallah. Okay, day three. Um, day three, tenth of the Hijjah, Eid al Adha, and first day of Nahar. Do we pray Eid Namaz? A young man, you still get Eid money, okay? Yeah, it should be doubled, multiplied. Why? Because you're a haji as well. Make sure. Where's your parents? There. Are you listening? What's your aid in it? Make sure you're haji. When you do hajj and you've done Eid, you know, you're, at your age, you're supposed to get like lots of money. I don't, okay, people need to give Eid money to their children. I said this the other day. You need to give Eid money to children. Children should get... Please conduce on Eid. Get it? It, the children need money on Eid. Say, so Putra, here you are. Five pounds, ten pounds. It means a lot. I met a young lad from Kaspi. I go, how much did you get? He goes, 30 quid. Everybody else was getting 40, 50, 60, 90. And I said, who didn't give you Eid money? He goes, my chache. I said, go and get it off them, even if it's Qadha. Get it? Get it? Kids are thinking about that. Let's make sure. 
I'm going to give you Eid money. Whose group are you in? Who's, is, he multi, with, is he Wayfarer? Are you guys going with Khalid? Pardon? No, nah, man. You're not with us. I'm going to give you nothing. <laughs> On arrival, pray Maghrib and Isha together. One Adhan, one Iqama. Collect. Are you listening? Pea sized stones. P is really important. People take jutia off. I see the front. I'm not lying. People take jutia off. You see, they throw jutia shaitan too. You took my children away. You took this, that. It's, it's symbolic. It's really important to do that. It's a very important ibadah. For every stone, if I remember correctly, Kabira is forgiven. Those stones are not small. That is a Bismillah Allah. It's massive ibadah. It's not, don't throw your jutia there. It's not about that, it's being in control in Sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad, Bismillah, Allah. Yes, it's really, it's true, Shaitan, and all those insinuations and all those waswasa, you get it, Bismillah, Allah. Allah. And so it's not about smashing the stone, it's about fulfilling. And it's about small pebbles. How are you going to carry bricks with your stones with you? It's pebbles, look at pebble, pebble sized stones. No. 49 or 71 in number, because you need stones 7, the first day, then 21, and then 21, plus 7 equals 48, right? And then if you do 21 again the third day, then it goes to 71, is that clear? So here, that's where, depending on how many you do, okay? Um, and so here, um, you collect these from Muzdalifa. You have them ready as you approach. Huh? It's an amazing moment. Amazing moment. Oh, what a moment. Why? Because one, you think, oh, you know, me, I'm on Hajj. <laughs> Especially when you look at journey and think, Allah, so and so is not on Hajj. I'm, Allah chose me to come on Hajj. And then you just done Arafat and you done Muzdalif, and you're now walking, right? So, Bismillah, Allah, amazing, amazing, very powerful. Um, spend the remainder of the night in worship and take some rest as well. This is the um, Eid night, first day of stoning. Sunnah Mu'akkadat remain here until dawn. Which one's this? Where are we? This is still Muzdalifah, isn't it? Can you see it here? This is all Muzdalifah, yeah? Because dawn means Fajr. You stay until Fajr, and why do you stay for a moment afterwards? Okay? Um, and and you've, got, you've got a dispensation for the women and the elderly to leave early if they need to. Because some of them can't see in the open air. They're already tired. So there is room then. All those ask your group leaders for where you can do that. And when Fajr enters on Yomir Muzdalifa, you pray as soon as possible. Okay? You pray and then you move. Um, perform the Bukum Muzdalifa even if it be for a moment. You're facing Qibla as wajib. Make dua, dhikr, and talbiya. Okay? So when you're in Muzdalifa, try to face Makkah, Makkah Sharif. And you can see the way people are praying. And then you try your best to remain focused now. A dam is due, a, you have to give a sacrifice if you don't get to Muzdalifa. For example, your coach is coming, coach is coming, coach is coming, the coach. Is that clear? So you now you miss Muzdalifa. You came after Fajr, and, uh, Fajr finished, for example, sometime later. Then you know your Hajj is fine, but you need to give a sacrifice. You can, you can fight with the group leader afterwards. Okay, you can sort that out. You know, you made my... You made my muzalifa. But he's a hajj kharaab kari shuriya. Then relax. Because it wasn't him who sent the coach or said, he didn't say, Yara, don't send the coach here. I don't like this hajji. He's taking the mic. Let's teach him a lesson. Trust me that I don't do that. It's all tawakkarna ala Allah from behind the system and the coach come, it comes. So it's one of those. Um, arrive back at the camp in Mina and await instructions to set out for the stoning. A lot of the times, people at this point break off. Groups, you see a family, they're all right. You can see that family, they know what they're doing as well. And he said, listen, you go. Follow the crowd, go stone and come back here. Is that clear? And that's better. So whenever you can see people can go independent, you let them go. So go, that's better. And some people you see, they, can't, they're not, they shouldn't go alone. Is that clear? So the groups sort of tend to keep them close. If you can go alone and you feel happy, go for it. Why are you going to wait three, four hours before the group's ready to go? All you're doing is going out, 
follow the crowd and send you to Allah. They throw you through one of the tunnels and just keep walking until you come to the stoning. And then you sort of, you know, you have to know how to get back. And normally, um, remember what they did with us last year. It was excellent. When they took us to Mina the night before, showed us what, how it looks like when you're stoning. You get really close to Jamarat, you get a feel of it. They show you what boards to follow to go back to your camp. So most groups tend to do that beforehand. Okay, and that's really helpful because that, that makes a big difference. Just knowing which boards to follow. Um, and then you've got Sunnah time for Rami on this day is from sunrise to midday. Stand about five meters and throw seven stones using the right hand. Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. You can go really close. Okay, but you need to hit it. You can't miss from there. Okay, so here, inshallah, take and elderly people, take them close. Aramnas, give them hosla afzai. It's okay, salam, I'm with you, don't worry. Bismillah. Okay, take them nice and close. Say, Aramnas, Sato. Bismillah, take your time. It's, uh, that's what we found. We found it very easy, inshallah. So d- relax and, and go closer. Just try to take them closer. Don't tell them, get this at all, get this at Take them closer. Make it easy for them. Is that clear? Okay. Um, and if you miss, where's it gone? If you miss and you can see the stone, you pick it up. Make sure it's safe to do so. And if you, if you can't pick it up, then you have to pick one up from the back somewhere. Okay. And throw it. Okay. And that's sort of not connected to the Rami. If the stone falls close to Jamara, it is still valid. Okay. As a valid throw. Four of the seven throws must be correct for them to be valid. Um, return to Azizia and wait for the news that your wajib qurbani has been offered. You could then shave or trim your hair as you did for the Umrah. And release and get out of Ihram state and you can wear normal clothes. Okay, beautiful feeling. Really nice. Everything becomes permissible except for marital relationships. It's like everything else is permissible. So I can use Hitar. Okay, I can use sabun. It's a great feeling. You have a shower with sabun. You'll have love for sabun. You'll have a bite of your sabun. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. You appreciate these things, by the way. You, you have a real feeling of alhamdulillah for this. Alhamdulillah for a clean body. Alhamdulillah. You know, like the ni'am. Alhamdulillah for normal clothes again. Alhamdulillah that I'm out of that restriction. Ni'am, real shukr comes up on your tongue and so forth. And then you, um, and then you head towards, because now you need to go muscle. But by the way, you don't have to go to on the day. You might say, my mom's not well, my sister's not well, my wife's not well. You know what? I, I think they need some rest. We're not going to go today. When are you going to go? Tomorrow. That's fine. You know, you've got the flexibility to delay your tawaf. Go and do your jamarat the next day. Then you go when they're a little bit better. That's better, right? There's no, there's no haste. There's no, you know, it's not binding to get there. For sure, it's nice to get there because then you can just free yourself, right? And it's beautiful to complete your Hajj. So I, I would think about. It. I remember coming back. Remember this Khalsa? We came back one night. Our group, some of the people were so tired. They were on the brink of illness. You could see in their faces. They had been Mecca. They had come back, and we looked at their faces, and they were like, they were just shattered. And they had to then walk for an hour from our hotel in Azizia to get to Mina. And their faces were saying, I was like, relax. Well, you don't have to make yourself ill. Go sleep in your hotel. You see, because you miss the sunnah, but you don't, you, don't, you don't harm yourself, and you don't become more sick. If, it, if you can do it, if it was close, nobody would miss it. But an hour's walk is not a small, um, you know, a small oh, distance. It's large. And it's heat, and people are sick, and they can get much worse. So, um, when you have room, say Alhamdulillah, you know, take the dispensation, especially for the elderly and those who are sick. Okay, and a lot of a lot of ease in hard, a lot of ease. The only problem is when people don't know. When they don't know, they, they make it really hard. Now you know, if you forget in your namaz, what do you do? You're like, what rakat am I I don't know. Salam alaikum to Allah. You gotta start all over again. Or you make a little mistake in your namaz, and then what happened? You know, I didn't read tasbih and sajda. So what, what happened? I started all over again. So what did you do that for? Tasbih is sunnah, you missed the sunnah, your namaz not break. I didn't know. And that's the problem. When people don't know, they make it really hard for themselves. This is why I read a little bit. Now, like one of the issues you're going to have there, you might be late for jamaat. When you're late for jamaat, what do you do? Imam gives salams and then you get people looking at each other. What happened? 
I came last rakat, but I don't know what to do next. So this is where, what should you do? Ask somebody. Now, ask now. If I miss, if I'm late for my rakat, for my salah, what do I do? How do I make it up? Okay? So just that you, knowledge makes it easier, much easier, subhanAllah. We're nearly there, and Pakistan are nearly winning. No chikia, no chikia. You're not looking good. Yeah, but the Pratan beat is just bad. Everything becomes permissible. Okay, we're on the next one. So tawaf with ramal. Okay, this tawaf because it's got sa'i after it. Okay, you've got the jog. Follow up with sa'i as you did in umrah. Then we turn to mina. Okay, you go back to them. those who are non-shifting go back to their hotels. They have it nice here. Okay, because they can rest and then they have to. But then they got a long way to go back to mina. So it's sort of give and take, really. You see, a really long way. As for the ones who are nazizia, they are much. I think. Azizi, our hotel is 20 minutes, which is amazing. You, only, you, can't, you can't appreciate 20 minutes until you've done an hour. So last year, our hotel was an hour away from our camps. And um, Waqaz say now, he's checked on the... Eh, 20 minutes is from our hotel to our camps. But from camp and hotel to stoning is 45, 50 minutes. But that's still very good. Because you come back, go to your hotel, rest the whole day, Okay, when you're ready, 20 minutes then before midnight or something, you to like, get to the camps, sleep the night there, and then come back again. Really nice. Um, so this is okay. Um, this is the they're, they're tough. You have to be ready. They're going to be tough days. Lambe, lambe days hot. Okay, so you make sure you're drinking lots of fluids, and and, and you know and staying hydrated because they really are long. Okay, and the other thing is not everybody's the same. You can't. I can't look at the next person thinking. Yeah, why do you nudge? Why? I ain't seen you do anything. You pray first namaz and that's it. You sleep. Leave him alone. He's in the court of Allah, like you're in the court of Allah. When you're in the court of Allah, you're not the judge. Allah's the judge. So you deal with yourself and leave them. Okay? You're not there to do that. That's a bad move if you start looking at this person, thinking, you know, stuff for Allah. Yeah. And so here we don't want that to happen. Um, and we're nearly home. Look. Alhamdulillah. So these days are easy. Um, we said you get to stone the shaitan. You have a lot of flexibility. Okay, from uh, for the, the remaining days. Says Rami of all Jamarat starting with the smallest wajib. If missed, then dam is due or must be made up to the following day. Time begins at Zawal and ends at dawn on the 12th of the Hijjah. So um, it starts after Fajr. Okay, and you've got all the way up until the next day. Uh, but the Sunnah is between. Uh, midday and sunset. This is trying to get your stoning every day. Other than the first morning, the second, and third, and fourth day, you want to get it. Post Zohar in Um They're the ones where you need nice slippers, nice shoes, comfortable shoes. Especially if you've got people who are not used to walking a lot, it can get, you know, it's a long walk. It can be an hour, an hour back. So it can be a two-hour walk every day. So, and so look, Sheikh Samir, when the group went, they wanted to go at Zohar. He goes, I'm not going to Zohar. The entire group had gone. And he was sitting all alone in the camp. They'd all gone. He goes, I'm not going to Zohar. Because it's too hot. <laughs> I'm not going to walk under the heat of the sun. He goes, I'm going to wait until it gets cooler. I'm going to go after Asr. He had his daughter with him. So they went after Asr when it's nice and cool. So think about that. If I've got elders with me, someone's got skin condition, wait a bit. Let it go cooler, okay? Two hour walk, you know, just before Maghrib, get it a nice cool walk after Maghrib. Yes or no? So these things are um, good to think about. Um, and so here you don't, after studying each of the first two Jamarat, move to the side, face the Qibla, make dua with the hands raised. Um, then these, these are stations where dua is accepted. But you don't make dua, okay, after studying the last Jamarat. There you just move and you walk on. And then you reach back to your tents, okay? Um, we will repeat the Rami on the 12th and the 13th of the Hijjah. Most Hujjaj Hajjis have and leave after the 12th, but it's sunnah to remain in the Mina or in Mina on the 13th and do an extra Rami. But, but it, that's great. It's a really good feeling to fulfill the sunnah. But um, you might say half of your, you know, your family, maybe you, you stay in the hotel. We're going to spend the night there. We'll come back in the morning and collect. You could do something like that. Um, you know, but the last night's not binding. Um, once the last Ram is complete on the 13th of Hijjah, your, your Hajj rights have come, come to an end. And then you get ready to go to Medina Sharif. Alhamdulillah.
But where most of our group would go then head to Makkah. Because we're move, we're going Azizia, we're doing Hajj, then we're moving to Haya, which is brilliant. That's the way I think it should be done. That's really good because last year we went Medina Sharif, Makkah Sharif, then we went to Azizia, then we did Hajj, and then from Azizia we came home. In hindsight, it was great, but if I could choose, it would be exactly how it is this time. I'm not, I'm in the most, I think it's brilliant. You go Azizia, there's no expectations of comfortable, beautiful five star beds. Sit there, right into the rough end, right? The first day is going to be tough because you need to go into Mecca, make the tawaf, come back. Then from this Azizia, you go do your Hajj. Once you've finished and you're spiritually on a high, then you're moved uh, literally, you know, stone throw away from the haram. Ah, oh, then you enjoy your prayers in the haram and you've already done your hajj. We were mentally tired because we were thinking hajj is not done. Hajj was right at the end, right? So we were really tired. You always knew I've got to hajj, I've got to hajj, I've got to hajj. As for now, no. Hajj is done early, then you go to Makkah Sharif, you've got nice, I don't know how many nights it is. Six, seven nights, Makkah Sharif. And then you're pumped up for, and you can do shopping, enjoy shopping, okay? And then you go, Medina Sheep, beautiful feeling. Nice, that is. Perfect. Alhamdulillah. So, I, I, inshallah, I'll make it easy for you and bless you. Uh, there may be things I got wrong, so you have a duty to go and check them, especially the combing one, I can't remember. Um, the idea was to try to go through this, um, you know, and, and try and make it easier for you. Uh, and I hope, I pray we've been able to do that. Um, I am fairly sure I'm going to run another session for Wickham and anybody else can join. You will get the news through the messages, hopefully. I can ask Brother Mohsen and Khalid to send it to you. It will be online as well. But I intend to go through um, Kaaba, the, the Barakah of the Kaaba and Maqamibs and the Masjids in Muzdalifa and, and Mina and, and all the main sites. And in terms of Medina Shri, when we go to Medina we'll do lots of uh, tours and you know, preparation, or, or, you know, talking about ziyarat and so forth. So we've left that this time around. Um, any questions? Sorry, aunties, Allah bless you. I'm so sorry, Apni Zuban, I don't, I'm not really good at it, but we couldn't do that. But um, I know High Wickham will have a course in okay, and um, uh, inshallah ta'ala, they, but every, you know, the daughters and children and people related to that, please make sure you get something that these elders, elderly people here. It's really important they hear and they know as well. They need to know. Give them a chance to learn and listen, okay? Because this is their great moment in life. And it becomes even more beautiful when they know what they're doing with confidence. You see? And rather than put the Qudr Juleon, Arafat, Bismillah. Okay? That's good, but you rather they know what Arafat is and so forth. Please do that for them. Any other questions? Yes, Baji. Yeah. No, you can have slightly extra just in case. No, you can just dispose of them there. So if you take extra pebbles, just in case, not a problem. And if I'm left over with the extras, what do I do? I can just dispose of them there. Okay, so that's not a problem. You don't bring them back home and put them as an ornament on your... Ah. No, you leave them there. Yeah. It, it won't count. Actually, it won't count. It's probably better to leave them on the side. Somebody benefit from it. Any other questions? Yep. Um, so, from which day can you wear your normal shoes? When you come back after the first stoning of the shaitan on the day of Eid, on the 10th of Dilhijjah, so you came from Arafat, you went to Muzdalifa at night. In the morning, you went and stoned the big shaitan. And then you came to your hotel and you waited for Qurbani news. As soon as the Qurbani news comes and you shaved your hair, then you can wear normal clothes and you can wear slippers of, or shoes or whatever you want. Yeah. And then the, the other day, you could stone in normal clothes and wearing nice trousers, sh slippers, shoes. You do what you want. No problem. Those restrictions have been lifted now. No. Uh, are we done? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Subhanakallah, wa bihamdika, shalala, ilaha illa anta astaghfirullah, ilaha illa anta astaghfirullah.
Fatiha ila hadrat al-Nabi alayhi wa sallam. I ask you to make dua for me, to make dua for each other. May Allah accept that coming together. May Allah bless our journey to go ahead. Make dua that Allah, Allah makes it easy for us and accept it from us, inshallah ta'ala. Fatiha alhamdulillah. Uh, we'll get a bit of break for a short tea break, inshallah, 15 minutes. Um, the next session is the logistics for just uh, our group, which is Abu Zahra, Wayfarers, and some people from Essential Islam as well. Anybody else who's from local or whatever? Anybody else who's uh, local or from elsewhere, any other group, then the session's over now, inshallah. Is that okay? So 15, 20 minute break, same rooms where you were for your lunch, and then we're back in 15 minutes. Yeah, it's true. Uh, yeah. 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 Ye